Hey, what's up, guys? We are super excited for our second week of Wednesday Night Live, and we are continuing, we're actually finishing up our series called The New Normal. This is our third week, and we're going to be actually talking about just what Annabelle said of the spiritual practice called fasting, the spiritual dis- discipline, the spiritual action called fasting. See, in fasting, if we look throughout the Bible, is actually present throughout the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, and the different cultures. So not just the Israelites or the um, Levites or just the Jews or the Gentiles. Everybody who had a relationship with God practiced this spiritual discipline of fasting. It's an act that transcends culture, so you don't, ha- you don't have to be just white. You don't have to be just black. You don't have to be just rich. You don't have to be just poor to fast. If you have a relationship with God, fasting is a very, very re- real spiritual discipline that the Bible talks about. See, the, the origin of fasting, though, it's, we're not really sure where it originated from. But we see in Scripture, specifically the Old Testament, that Fasting was a religious activity. People who had this relationship with God, who followed God, who were worshiping God, worshiped God through fasting. We see people who practice fasting as a way to mourn, a way of grieving, a way of expressing extreme pain. And then we see some people fast after they've lost a loved one, after, after they lost, lost something, um, whether it be their home, whether it be their wife, their kids. We see that in the book of Job, right? But fasting is very hit hard in the New Testament. See, and there's a more common definition of fasting in the New Testament, Testament and it's this. Fasting is voluntarily, which means you choose, right? You're not being forced. It's a decision you are making on your own. Fasting is voluntarily going without food. That's the fame. That's like the popular version of fasting. It's like, oh, we know Jesus fasted for 40 days. But fasting is, going, is voluntarily, voluntarily going without food or any other regularly enjoyed good gift from God for the sake of some spiritual purpose. Every gift of God that we enjoy, we can actually fast from. Annabelle had an amazing, amazing example. Digital. You can give up time watching TV. You can give up time on your phone. See, fasting, although it is more known as a, uh, a food kind of act, fasting can actually happen in a couple different areas of our life. But if we're honest, church, fasting is hard, right? Fasting is a very, very hard thing because fasting requires us to intentionally give something up. Trey talked last week and we talked two weeks ago about quiet time. We're talking about prayer. These spiritual disciplines, fasting, prayer, quiet time, journaling, they're not just something that happens because, oh, wow, like, I, like look at what seemed to happen all together for whatever purpose, right? No. Spiritual practices, spiritual disciplines happen because we make intentional decisions to pursue them. And fasting is a very hard one, and it's one that not a lot of people enjoy because it requires us to give something up. Then, like I said, there are different types of fasting, We see Jesus, he fasted after he was baptized. He actually went into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days. And this is sometimes what we see, what we associate fasting with is his food. But I know people who have had a liquid fast, that that they've had smoothies, that they've only drank water throughout the day, they've had protein shakes, they haven't had solid food. And Annabelle actually uh, mentioned Daniel. There's actually a thing called Daniel fast. You can read more into that. And that doesn't eliminate all food. It eliminates specific food. We see, um, we see the liquid fast. We see the Daniel fast. And I would say there's actually two areas of fasting too, private and communal. See, and we actually see Jesus, Annabelle referenced that in Matthew 6, that, uh, that you should start fasting because you are privately doing this. Like people shouldn't even be able to tell that you're fasting because you're going on with your daily life, because you're not making it a scene. You're not trying to be like the hypocrite and try to make everything about them. No, fasting is this personal act of worship that we do with God. So there's this intentional, there's this personal side of fasting. But I also believe there's a communal side of fasting. 
A couple years ago, before we moved into City Station, we as a church fasted together. Some people did the Daniel fast. Some people fasted with their life groups. Others fasted individually. They, uh, they picked specific days. And uh, so I want to tell you a funny story. Me and my wife, we actually did that. And we picked Wednesdays to, um, to fast. And if you know anything about my Wednesdays, my Wednesdays, like they go like that. It, it's all over the place. It's church. We're setting up the room. We're welcoming students. We're delivering the message. And then when you get home, it's like, gosh. I didn't eat anything all day. I feel fine. But my wife, on the other hand, had a desk job where they had a bowl of fruit sitting in the middle of their office. And she's like, what kind of sick joke is this, right? (laughs) No. So you can fast with your life group. You can fast with your family. Dude, I encourage you. Talk to your family about ways that you can fast together. Talk to your life life group about how you guys can fast together. There's a private side and the communal side of fasting. But what's the purpose of it? Like, we can get like, hey, this is the what, this is the how, but what's the why behind this? See, if I, I want to go to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, this is, um, this is actually a couple, ver- couple chapters after the Sermon on the Mount, right? And Jesus is um, actually, he's coming in contact with some of John the, John the Baptist's disciples, and they're having a conversation with each other. And John the Baptist's disciples actually said this, and this is Matthew chapter 9, verse 14. It said, One day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, Why don't your disciples fast like we do in the Pharisees? Like, they're like wondering, like, why are Jesus' disciples not fasting like us, John the Baptist's disciples, right? See, Jesus replied with this, Do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. And if we actually want to look at the imagery that Paul uses in um, Ephesians, he calls us the church, the bride, right? And that Christ is the head of the church, the groom. And we use this marriage illustration that That Jesus, the groom, and we are the bride, and we are united with one. You can't have Jesus, and you can't have church. You can't have Jesus, and you can't have church, right? There's that unity in this. And Jesus is using this exact same illustration, this imagery right here. He says, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Like, he's saying, the groom's here. Like, I'm still here. My disciples are in my presence. Like, fasting is because you're looking forward to something else. It's because you're mourning. It's because you're taking an intentional decision to withdraw something out of your life so you can focus on something that's not there. Jesus is saying, dude, I'm still here. But there's going to be a day that the groom will be taken away. And we know this through the cross, right? The groom was taken away from the physical presence of the disciples. And he says, and then they will fast. Who's they? Church, it's us. We are they. His disciples, followers of Christ, we're they. And we have the Spirit, we have the Holy Spirit, but we don't have the physical presence of Jesus anymore. See, when the bridegroom was taken away, when the groom was taken away, to come a second time, there's an there's a ache in people's hearts. These disciples, they didn't know what to do when Jesus actually ascended back into heaven. They sat together. They actually went to this room, and they just sat there. They didn't, they didn't know what to do, and then the Holy Spirit came upon them. There's this ache of desiring God because, or desiring Jesus because he's not here. This physical presence isn't here. And see, what fasting is, fasting is a physical exclamation point at the end of of sentences like this. I need you, Christ. I want you, Christ. I long for you, Christ. You are my treasure, Jesus. I want more of you. I have this desire. I have this longing for you, Jesus. And there are distractions in my life that I need to withdraw from my life. I need to take away. I need to just cut out of my life so I can stop focusing on the distractions and start focusing my attention to you, Jesus. Because Jesus, I desire you more than anything. And church, follower of Christ, listen to me. Dude, that should be our heart. Our heart should be longing for Jesus. Not things of this world that will pass, but of eternity 
with the Father. See, and when we fast, fasting is this expression of followers of Christ that we have this deep longing for Jesus, that we're willing to take away distractions, whether that be food, our phones, whether that be TV, video games, whether it be a certain type of food, whatever it is, that we can be filled with the presence of Jesus in the absence of these distractions. See, the heart of fasting is a longing for Jesus. Go back to that story with me and my wife. Like, there were some Wednesdays, yeah, it went quick, and I was able to say, man, like, I'm not even hungry. I don't even, I'm not hangry, right? I know some of us get hangry. Um, But there were some days during this fast that without the comfort that I had with food, my true heart was revealed in the way I treated my wife, in the way I treated coworkers, in the way I treated my friends. And it's so crazy to think about something as little as food can be a distraction, can fill a void in our heart that was meant for Jesus to fill. Does that make sense? And man, dude, my heart was revealed, and my heart, it was revealed ugly at times. Because this absence of food was gone, and what did I decide to feel this, comfort, this uncomfortable feeling of, hey, I'm hungry? I decided to fill it with myself instead of filling it with the presence, with the glory, with the beauty, with the majesty of Jesus. See, what fasting does, it exposes our true heart. And it allows us with no distractions, turn our hearts to Christ and Christ alone so we can be filled with his spirit, so we can be filled with his glory, so we can be filled with his presence. Fasting exposes what our heart desires, what our heart longing. I know when I say fasting from phones, some of you listening right now are like, no way, right? There ain't no way I can live with this or live without this. There's no way. Like, I had to set a time limit on TikTok for myself. I'm a 23-year-old man. That's embarrassing. I was vegging out. I was binging on a social media platform where I could turn to Scripture. I could have turned to prayer. But instead, I used that time selfishly. Do fasting exposes our hearts. So where do we go here from now? What do we do? What's my challenge to you guys? My challenge to you guys is to start fasting. I'm not saying you have to fast from food right away. But fast from something. Whether it be your phone whether it be a certain social media. I know people who have done social media fast for a month straight. They delete the apps off their phone and they never download Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok. And dude, they're some of the friendliest people I know because they're not trying to put on a facade of fake persona anymore. Maybe it is social media. Maybe it's just your phone at, in, at all. I listened to a podcast recently of a pastor who has a one 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 rule with his phone. One hour a day, he turns his phone off. One day out of a month, he turns his phone off completely. And then one week out of a year, he turns his phone off completely. Dude, maybe we need to do something like that. Maybe it is food. Maybe it's a Daniel fast. Whatever it is, start. But when you do start, start small. Jesus fasted the 40 days, and that's physically, humanly possible, but good night, don't try to fast for 40 days. Maybe it's just one meal right now. Maybe it's like, man, I, I'm going to skip lunch so I can devote myself to prayer. I put my phone away for one hour so I can spend time with my family. Start small and then build on that. Make that one meal. Do that for a week. Maybe after two weeks or so of that, make it two meals. And then after a month of that, I'm not saying fast for a month, excuse me. Let me, let me rephrase that. But after you've built up to this, maybe you go for a full day without food. Maybe you build up to where you can give your phone up for 
hold on, wait a minute, an entire day. Maybe you're able to build up into an entire week. Do something small and build on that. And then third, make a plan, be intentional, because these, these spiritual disciplines require intentionality. Fasting is not this practice where you go and it's like, okay, I'm just going to fast after lunch. No, you have to set a time, set a specific time, set a specific day, a specific week where you're going to fast. Because that is a detailed, that is an intentional, that is a worshiping style of fasting. Make a plan and share that plan with somebody. Whether that be your friends, whether that, I encourage you, share that with your family and your life group. What do we want you to do? Guys, we want you to fast. I'm telling you guys right now, on Wednesday night, I am pledging to fast the entire Thursday without food. And that's what I'll do for a little while. But we encourage us, we want to communally fast together. I'm not saying you have to fast from food, but maybe you go to your life group leader and say, hey, I need accountability in fasting from social media. Can you put a password on my phone that I don't know? Hey, mom and dad, I am committing myself to give up an hour of technology so I can spend it with you. Can you hold me accountable with that? And be intentional with your plan. Don't be lackadaisical. Don't be whimsical with it. Do go full force, boldness of the Holy Spirit into this style of worship. Because that's what these spiritual disciplines are. It's worship. Worship is directing our focus to God. And what better way to focus our worship to God than to take away the distractions that are taking away our worship? Be intentional. Start. Do something small and build on that. Make a plan and share that plan. Let's pray. God, we love you. God, I pray that we examine our lives, that we're real in our lives, God. And God, that we examine our hearts. We, see, we examine our lives, look at the distractions that are in our lives. And God, that we just cut those things out. God, and God, I pray that some of us, that we take this spiritual step of fasting, God, and God, it's hard. It is hard. You know it is hard, Jesus. But man, the beauty of you, Jesus, the majesty, the glory of God, man, it comes more alive in our lives when we start to with, remove those distractions. God, I pray as a Jesus family, we hold each other accountable, that we support each other in this fast, God. Whatever that looks like for each individual listening, to, uh, tuning in, God. God, we thank you for giving us the example of fasting, God. And God, thank you for Jesus. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My challenge to you guys is in the comments section. is to say what you're fasting from. Say what you're fasting from, when you're going to do it. And let's hold each other accountable.